This video is about preparing for a motorcycle trip to Alaska. In June of 2009, I made the trip up from Greeley, Colorado to Alaska. And after the trip, I had put together uh, pictures, slideshow, video of the trip. I also put together a list of things that I would do different in preparation for the next trip. And I'm currently planning the next trip, which will be in June of 2013. So this video is about that preparation. It's going to take months to prepare for a trip like this. Uh, you're going to be gone quite a few days. You're going to be putting on you know, several hundred miles each day. Uh, just from Greeley, Colorado to Fairbanks, it took us 10 days and it was over 4,200 miles. So one of the keys is keep a, start a list of all the items and categorize that, those lists. And I use an Excel spreadsheet. And then as you go through the planning process, you update the items in the spreadsheet. Uh, as far as planning your route, if you stay on the Alaska Highway, you'll be in pretty good shape. There are stretches of gravel where they've patched the road. Uh, Upper Yukon has frost heaves, um, potholes, those kinds of things. So something to keep in mind as you take some of the loops, uh, allow a little extra time. Another key is packing and making sure that you've got all your gear, you're prepared. Uh, so basically you're going to pack and unpack several times just to make sure everything's balanced out. You've got the appropriate gear for the trip. As I mentioned, it takes a lot of time to plan for a trip like this. Even though I've gone up before and I can leverage the checklists and experience and things like that, I'm still planning. Here it is, February of 2012. I'm still and I'm not leaving until June of 2013, I'm starting the planning process. Part of it is uh, I'm going to get a new motorcycle, so you have to equip that motorcycle with the necessary accessories to uh, handle a travel, a trip like that. Another thing you want to get is the mile post. It is the Bible. Uh, because it weighs over three pounds, you don't, it's not likely you're going to want to take that on your trip. So what I did is scan and printed out some of the uh, maps and places of interest. Uh, travel companions, uh, something to take very seriously because um, you want to travel with someone that has uh, lifestyles, whether it's camping, eating, uh, or endurance. Uh, after putting um, three, four, five hundred miles on day after day, you want to make sure that's someone that you'll be, uh, you know, want to be around at the end of the day. So take that very seriously. Uh, there's a lot of people that want to go. Very few that actually can and will go. And of those few, there's a percentage that are not prepared. Uh, what we did is put together a schedule of the route, the waypoints, the mileage between them. And it kind of puts things in perspective. Not only the number of days, but uh, the miles you need to travel. What I used was the Microsoft Outlook uh, calendar feature and uh, plugged in you know, where we anticipated being and the number of miles from the current location to that destination. So we use that as a reference. We followed it really closely for the first two weeks. And then the last week coming back, we varied from it quite a bit. Uh, another thing I did is uh, I kept the notepad in uh, my top pocket. I tracked everything as far as uh, mileage, gas, costs, those kinds of things. I also kept a journal, something separate. And what I would put in there would be uh, just observations from the day, whether it be weather, uh, places of interest, uh, uh, mileage, that kind of thing. So I did kept the, kept the journal at the end of the day. Okay, I'm going to cover some of the clothes and miscellaneous gear. Uh, layering is key. Um, if you've hiked or even taken a day ride motorcycle trip into the mountains, you know that down low it can be 70 degrees and up in the mountains it can be pretty cold. So packing the right layers is important. On the uh, Alaskan trip I took, I think the coldest morning was around the low 30s, but typically the mornings will be 40, 45 degrees. And then the end of the day, depending on the weather, it may be as warm as 75 degrees. So it's important that you have the layers and good, good clothing. And we'll cover some of that a little later. I prefer the half helmet. Uh, that kept the back of my neck and my ears warm, kept the moisture off, off of me. So that's the preference there. As far as glasses, 
because of overcast and rain, I wore the clear safety glasses uh, most every day, and they work good for me. Um, if you riding with a full face helmet, you probably want to pack some anti-fog because once it starts raining, there's a good chance that's going to fog up. One of the most important pieces of gear to keep me comfortable riding in the in the weather conditions was the Scampa neck gaiter, and I'll cover that a little bit. But those actually do work. They are wind and waterproof. As far as gloves, uh, three pairs should do it. Uh, you got your light gloves, and then you've got a couple of gauntlets for waterproofing and uh, warmth. So the waterproof Gore-Tex gauntlets, they were nylon, which I prefer. They dry out quick. I wore those pretty much every day of the trip. As far as riding comfort, uh, Alaska Leather makes an awesome sheepskin pad. I ordered mine, came down in three days. It should make you make for a very comfortable ride. Uh, once again, uh, here's my checklist in the spreadsheet. Uh, I just track everything. and uh, I may not take it all, but at least I have a reference of what I need to pack. As far as loading the gear onto the bike, um, you just want to make sure that it's, uh, you know, heavy weight is down low and it's balanced out. When I went up, I had exactly 100 pounds of gear. Uh, the pack, and I was riding a uh, Road King style bike, so it just had the two saddlebags and a luggage rack. So my pack had 42 pounds in there, mostly the light stuff. Everything from hand warmer packets to uh, laundry detergent and uh, you know my clothes, all the light stuff. The saddlebags is where the where the heavy stuff was. The left saddlebag had uh, you know leathers, heavy uh, gear like additional uh, coats and things like that. On top of that saddlebag, I had a 30 liter dry bag, and you can pick these up at Sportsman's Place. And um, uh, basically, it is just a waterproof bag. And in that bag, I had the tent, uh, some pads, and pillows, and just miscellaneous things in there. On the right saddle bag, I had uh, my gear bag of tools, and we'll go through that in a bit. That's pretty heavy. And um, and then on top of that bag, that saddle bag, I had another dry bag which had the two light sleeping bags in it. So basically 30 pounds on one side, 28 on the other, 42 in the pack. So, And it was very balanced out. Uh, the bike handled very well. One thing to consider is your shock absorbers. I did have to bump the uh, pressure up in the air shocks of uh, 5 psi. Uh, once again, uh, a tab in the spreadsheet for all of the tools and gear that you would need uh, for your motorcycle and um, repairs. Now if you're riding a newer bike you can probably just get away with the basics or if you're relying on relying on roadside assistance just use just pack the basics. Uh, another important tip here is uh, prior to leaving we did this three weeks before we left is we loaded up the bike and did a dry run out to a local campground and uh, you got you pretty comfortable with handling the bike with that much gear on it as well as uh, as you went through the uh, camping process uh, you identified a few things that either you wouldn't take or that you had missing so it's important to do a test run Here's a picture of my bike. The tire's a joke. I didn't actually take it. Just uh, I emailed uh, one of my companions uh, uh, this picture and said I'm ready to go. But basically, you can see what the bike, how the bike is loaded. Got the sheepskin pads. Got the dry bag on the left and on the right. Another dry bag. And uh, I did have the CB. I added the CB antenna on there because one of the riding companions had a CB. I don't know if I'd do it on the next trip or not. We did use it a few times and it did come in handy uh, listening to the Trucker Channel. Okay, I'm going to go through uh, some of the documents and money that you should be taking along. On my previous trip, I took $1,000 and that's plenty of, plenty of cash and I had plenty when I got back. And the reason is because when I get as soon as I cross the border into Canada, I use the ATM to withdraw cash. Something to think about is uh, ATM withdrawal fees. Uh, the uh, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce in Canada, they have, it's a huge bank up there. They've got branches everywhere. They were in the same network as my local bank, so I didn't have any any withdrawal fees. So that's something you can check ahead of time, find out where their branches are, and plan to get your cash at one of their branches. 
As far as credit cards, they were only used for at the hotel. Um, I might have made a, a major uh, expense at a Harley dealer or a Walmart up in Anchorage, but uh, for the most part, uh, you just you need the credit card for the hotel. Call ahead and make sure they know you're traveling so they don't put a block on it. Uh, left everything else at home as far as other cards, just take what you need. Uh, you need your passport for the Canadian crossing. Um, also, Canada has higher uh, liability insurance requirements uh, than Colorado, that is higher minimum. So what I did is uh, a week before I left, I uh, contacted the agent, purchased 30 days for $3 and some change, and they issued a special colored card. That's a law up there, so you want something to consider. I also made photocopies of um, <coughs> all my important documents, kept them separate. Um, it, either in the jacket or in the pack, separate from the real document. Uh, as far as emergency contact, uh, in case of emergency contact, you want to carry that information both on your person and on the bike. Food and snacks, uh, Canada is expensive and you're also limited uh, on what you can get up there. So basically you want to purchase everything before crossing the border. Um, and uh, we just we pack some snacks and fruit um, and it, we camp so you got to be careful you don't really don't want food around you because there are bears up there as far as rain expect rain uh, going up it took us 10 days it rained we had actually great weather going up uh, there's a couple of days in there where it rained but not much and uh, but on the way back it rained five days straight not the whole day we actually camped a couple of those days but it might rain in the morning or afternoon and so expect rain, so you need the Scampa neck gaiter. Uh, I like the kind that slips over my head. You can wear it around your neck, it is a dicky, Or you can just pull it up over your nose and, and draw, have the drawstring and it'll keep you nice and snug. Uh, talked about the waterproof gloves. I like the nylon uh, gauntlet Gore-Tex gloves. If you don't have heated grips on your bike, because it will get cold in the morning, or even when it's raining out, uh, you want to get some hot hands or hand warmers. They work well. You can put them in the palm of your hand, slip your glove on. Uh, they'll last all day. You do have to shake them every now and then to reactivate them. Uh, rain gaiters, they're small and they pack easy. I did take them up, but uh, only wore them once because I did have the lowers on my engine crash guard. I didn't need uh, my feet. My feet stayed warm and dry. We already talked about get a helmet, that's good. Keep the water from getting down around your neck. So definitely want the rain gear, um, just motorcycle rain gear, because uh, you'll wear it. As far as border crossings, they're pretty easy. We didn't have any issues getting across the border. We crossed it five times. And uh, the main thing is, is just be polite and courteous and be prepared. So uh, some of the questions that they asked, and there was very few, where are you going, why? Uh, how long you plan on being there and then we were coming back into the states they asked us where we worked and what you did what you did so they'll take your passport they'll do a check on it make sure everything's good so you can google border crossings as far as limitations on alcohol and tobacco um, lots of good information out on the web uh, i put together a checklist uh, uh, once again it was a tab in my spreadsheet uh, just in preparation for these border crossings. Um, I did take my helmet, sunglasses off, although in one crossing the guy said you can leave the helmet on, so there you go pretty quick. Just be polite and courteous and just have your act together and, and uh, you know the passport's the main thing. Yes, no kinds of questions. Another tab in my spreadsheet was a list of things to do just before I left, so jot these down uh, that way, just before you leave, you'll have everything covered. Uh, Alaska and Canada are some uh, great places to visit, great people up there. Take the time, spend an extra day, especially in Dawson City, the upper part of Canada and Alaska. There's some great people up there, a lot of good culture. So in summary, just have your act together. Um, you're going to spend a lot of time on the bike, so be prepared. Uh, I can't stress the layering. Uh, it's going to, the weather's going to change, and uh, you want to be prepared for it, and you want good gear. And like it says, don't forget the chamois, because it will rain. Good luck in preparing for your Alaska motorcycle trip.